Hello everyone and welcome to the Woman Reinvention Project video series. Now what you're going to learn from, I've got a whole bunch of different experts and what you will learn is how to fire up your energy, work with passion, enjoy more freedom now by doing less. My name is Vesna Hursto, I'm a naturopath and a life coach at VesnaHursto.com and today I'm so excited to be speaking with Cassandra. Cassandra is an Amazon best-selling author of the Midlife Career Rescue series of books. She's a direct director at Work Life Solutions. She's a coach and life coach consultant in New Zealand and internationally. And the reason why I asked Cassandra to be on this interview series is because I read her book, How to Find Your Passion and Purpose, The Four Easy Steps, and I loved it. And I thought she has to come and talk to you guys. So today we're very lucky to have Cassandra. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Vesna. It's exciting to share passions with other people who are passionate. I agree. And I felt like when we spoke on the phone, I could have talked to you all day about passion. <laughs> it was a great I conversation. I think that's what people forget. It's so energizing, you know, um, and I think that's the, the thing that we're, we'll be talking about is for a lot of people, they're just lacking energy. And when you tap into your passion, it's, it, especially when you're with other passionate people, it's yeah. really infectious. I always say that it's quite magnetic. When you see someone that's in their passion, living their purpose, it's really infectious. It's really magnetic. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. So how did you get started into this field of passion and writing about passion? What was kind of brought you yeah, to? Yeah, well, uh, and I often say to people when they say, well, how do I find my passion? It, it's not something you choose rationally. Mm -hmm. You don't go out, well, you, there are tips to sort of go out and kind of at least be open to it. But I, I came across my passion and I think sometimes people forget that passion can also be uh, anger. Mm. And when you use it constructively, you can change the world. So, you know, just look mm. at the, the Martin Luther King and yeah. people who are angry about injustice and racism and things. So I came across my passion because just a number of instances, and I remember in one workplace that I was in, um, my manager in an open plan environment, he was quite a bully. Uh, and he earned a lot of money, so they put up with this bullying, horrible behaviour. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I was a recruitment consultant, and I asked him, when was my candidate going to get an interview? Because people don't want to be hanging around wondering if they're in or out. Yeah, yeah. And he said to me, uh, Cassandra, if you ask me one more time, I'm going to smash your fucking head in. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I, I was actually quite a quiet little I, I was quite a, I don't know, I just like to blend in and not create a yeah, yeah. problem. And this immense, um, power from my heart, this immense kind of, my God. And I remember being calm, um, strong in my power, and I just said, look, I know that you're in a bad mood, but I'm going to ask you one more time in his face. Oh, it's like it's goodness. power deflated. It's yep. like, you mean you're not running? And he just looked at me and he smiled and he kind of, you know, he, it was this twisted sort of respect. But that's, that was the beginning. And then seeing the amount of people that were really traumatized in their work environments um, and really unhappy and depressed. And I don't know, somehow I just, somehow passion became a kind of a core, helping people find their passion because I believed in the power of it yeah. became kind of a, Passion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love and it. It's true. I'm obsessive. I collect articles. I write about people who are passionate. It's, it's yeah, it, it's, I love it. Passionate about passion. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> awesome. So what do you find, let's go into, I think, because your four key steps that from your book, Finding Your Passion yeah. and Purpose, I love them. They were so clear. They were so concise. What would you say is the first key step in someone discovering their passion or their purpose, whether it be in their career or their life or relationships, whatever it is, so it's not just kind of confined to career. I know that you know, you've talked about that. What's yeah. kind of the first first thing to look at? Well, I think the big thing is that it's letting go of assumptions and um, being open to what we mean by passion. And I remember reading somewhere, passion is a lot like love. You know, how do you find one definitive mm. word that sums up love? 
And passion is often used a lot in marketing, and a lot of people get sick of hearing sometimes the word passion. Mm. In fact, there was a career coach that said to me once, if I hear that word one more time, I'm going to kill someone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she needed a career change. She needed to find a passion. <laughs> Sometimes it can be overused. So mm. one of the first steps is really just to think about what is passion. And at its core, passion is an emotion. It's not a rational feeling. You know, I've talked about anger. It could be intense joy, love. You know, it goes by many names. But it, in its heart, it, well, it is. It's in your heart. It's, mm. it's emotion and intense yeah. emotion. It doesn't have to be extroverted. You can be quietly... Um, passionate, you know, I know people, my partner's passionate about exotic butterflies. It's not something he roars and jumps out and mm -hmm. it's, it's so quietly, he goes mm. in the flow. Yeah. It's, I think yeah. that's a really good distinction to make because I think when often when we think about passion, we think really extroverted, like this is what I'm doing, I'm so excited and yeah. everyone needs yeah. to know about it and I'm just going to broadcast it to the world. But you can be quite introverted and being in your flow and in your passion and perhaps people around you won't yeah. really, you know, they won't really see it, but you're totally in your passion. Yeah. And the other thing, Vesna, is pe people don't realise that they're in, that that's happening because they're so, they're not really always aware. And this is the big thing with opening yourself up to finding your passion is, is building more awareness of the times when you lose all sense of time or like I was the girl who wanted a wedding when I was getting married I wanted a table down the back of the room because I didn't want everyone looking at me up the front <laughs> and now you know I've spoken at conferences all over the world centre stage so this is the girl who doesn't really like being up the front but when you're talking about passion you lose your kind of ego worries yeah you just you just kind of lose your, yourself and yeah. you go to a different plane mm -hmm. um so yeah it's just being aware of those moments and i know many many people will say oh but that's only for the, the lucky ones yeah. you know that they've got this really cool hobby and in fact a lady i trained to be a coach said the same thing and she said i just thought nah it's not for me i have i'm not passionate yeah, wow. And yet when we started talking, her brother died of obesity. Um, he had a heart attack, a young, young um, man stemming from trauma and childhood from, from divorced parents. But she, you know, she's really passionate about making a difference now about um, helping men particularly open up their emotions and deal with weight, weight issues. Yeah, so now she's definitely passionate. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, passion does, it feels like, it doesn't care what's going on in your life. Like, you know, it's just going to totally override your life. Like, and it doesn't, like, and sometimes to the outside world or even to yourself, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it can feel quite irrational, the things that you're doing in order to, to seek out your passion or to follow your passion. But it feels like it's a force that overrides your life. And it's a good force. It's so positive. But um, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't always make sense to the outside world. Mm. No. In fact, uh, I met, because uh, I'm also a qualified psycho psychologist, and I met other psychologists who will say, do you think these people have a disorder? You know, these, really? <laughs> these passionate people, do wow. they have a disorder? That's a worry, because it's out of the norm. But yeah, and because they're really, you know, I know a man who's passionate about rocks, yeah. you know, rocks, but he's created this amazing rock-themed um, park in Wellington called Kaluchi Land that people just love. But he sees faces in rocks. And yeah, wow. He can see Mother Teresa in a rock. And, a, and, and so this woman's Amazing. going, do you, do you think he needs medicating? I mean, <laughs> really? Maybe it's the rest of us, or maybe that's why so many people, you know, uh, are trying to opt out in various ways because we've just lost that kind of yeah. madness. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> so true. I think we, we talked about this on the phone that. Um, being passionate is, is seen as kind of, you know, madness or um, eccentric, where it's really just being authentic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually normal and somehow it's become not okay to yeah. kind of, yeah, I don't know, it's just dumbing down um, yeah. in this era, particularly in New Zealand, where we have this, um, what we call the tall poppy syndrome, whereas if somebody's sort of out there doing it, there um, people will just try and create this flat leveling. And, and and you asked me earlier about some of the challenges I faced. Well, you know, when I created the passion pack, the book that you love, 
somebody said to me, you know, who, who the hell do you think you are? And I was, what do you mean? She said, telling people how to live their life. And I thought, well, well I'm, I'm, I'm not, and I found myself justifying mm. it. It was just an idea I had. And I thought, look, it's just short little sound bites. It might be helpful. No, I'm not forcing people to buy it. Yeah. Um, and she said, um, my, aren't we a little princess? And she well, just started it. She just yeah. kept attacking me. And, and I suddenly thought, hey, this isn't about me. Mm. Actually, you don't attack another person unless there's something going on uh, with you. Triggered. And so I just stopped defending myself. And, and what happened is she gradually sort of came to her, back to herself and said, you know what, I, I just feel like I haven't achieved anything in my life. And I was jealous. Mm. Yeah, jealous of you. So at least she had the, you know, the clarity to say, yeah. um, the bigness to say that. But a lot of people are afraid of being criticised, so they mm. don't step into their passion because they're really worried. Yeah. Uh, people might say, "Well, screw it." There's plenty of people like you. Know, you're like, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting. I, I think that. if if people get triggered by the conversation of passion, or even get triggered by this conversation then there's definitely something for them to look at there because I find yeah. whatever you get triggered by yeah. is something that you secretly want. Yeah, mm. yeah. That, and that's interesting because I've sort of been doing, a, and again when we get to the barriers later, resistance. Mm -hmm. Resistance is a really big barrier where, you know, you, you make excuses, rational excuses why you can't yeah. have this thing, whether it's yeah. passion, you know, like it's only for them or you're people mm -hmm. big-headed or it's just – trying to legitimise why is why you're not stepping into what yeah. you should be stepping in, which you know in your heart. And it's yeah. like a magnetic field, like you said. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it, the amount of energy it takes to resist what you know you really should be doing with your life is yeah. massive. Well, see, this is what I noticed with women who are burnt out. I mean, there's lots of resistance of passion and purpose and meaning or or – or even if their jobs were passionate, they're no longer a source of passion for them. You know, things change, things evolve over time, but it's that constant suppressing which is exhausting. It's yeah. kind of like, I always say it's kind of like putting a lid on the life force, do you know? Yeah. It's just, it's yeah, just, you are. Yeah. That's one way people talk about depression. I'm not mm. talking about, you know, where you've got legitimate um, an imbalance in your chemistry and within your brain, but there's a lot of people who depression yeah. is to depress your spirit, which yeah. is essentially what, what passion feeds is your soul. Yes. Um, and just talking about, you know, people, we, we grow, we change, our hair changes, our nails grow, yeah. you know, everything, we're growing and so many people stay stuck. And mm. this one lady, she was a teacher and she said, I used to love teaching, but I woke up one morning and I didn't love it anymore. Yeah. And she became a romance writer. Yeah, wow. Yeah, well, see, this is... Things change, like, I mean, that's such a such a big change too, but it can happen. I've seen it happen, yeah. you know, to many people, but it's, imb yeah, it's definitely embracing it, stepping into it instead of suppressing yeah. it. Yeah, following love. So following sad. love, I love that. <laughs> okay, so the first key step, definitely being more open to to discovering your passion. Yeah, just, just being aware. Being noticing aware. signs, yeah. noticing your body barometer, um, which is what we're step two is really about just um, noticing, um, being really aware. So I remember being in um, an art gallery in New York and suddenly my heart started racing. I was looking at a Monet, I think it was, and I was, it was racing. I thought, I've got my notebook out and I thought, I'm going to just notice what's going on. It's really weird. You know, am I having a heart attack? Yeah, and wow. then, you know, I started, you know, what it, you know that feeling when you, you just love something yeah. or someone and you just, all the signs are there in your physical sensations. Mm -hmm. And I, it reminded me that I used to love painting with oil colour. Mm. And I haven't done it, I've done down, not done down, no offence to painters. I, I'd started painting with acrylics mm -hmm. and eventually stopped painting. And I just had this awakening and I started wow. painting again and ended up winning a... Uh, the Supreme Art Awards of, wow. of the competition. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, not because I'm anyone particularly special, but because I just, um, it, that was my thing, and mm. I just practiced and persevered and wanted to do it just because it was love. So I just encourage people to, to 
listen for the signs um, and just you don't have to act on them just record them yeah. um, in your passion journal mm-hmm. shall we talk about that so, yeah so step two is definitely about being noticing the signs so whether it be signs in your body things yeah. around you that kind of stimulate will you always do you find people generally feel it in their bodies like they get that reaction like it's whether it be heart racing or butterflies or just this energy that kind of just runs through the body yeah i i, I think they tuned in often you know i'll say what do you notice for example when when they're depressed a lot of people come to see me and one of my first clients was suicidal you know it's that it's that serious mm-hmm. and um you'd say well where do you feel you know where do you feel this emotion in your body? And people are so disconnected yeah. from their bodies, they had no idea until you started asking, or well, what colour? I would say, what colour is depression? And it's usually not rosy pink. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. So when you say, you know, where do you feel? What do you notice in your body when you? It might be that you see a magazine article and you think, God, that's exciting. Yeah. Somewhere you've got a physical sensation going yeah. on. It's so exciting. You've got to rip it out. Yeah. You know? so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's talk about, is step three the passion journal? Yeah, well, it's intertwined because, okay, um, one of the signs is, is one of the things is to just start to record the moments. You know, like mm-hmm. when you go away on a holiday, you record those moments of that wonderful trip in your photograph album or now in some digital format or Facebook mm-hmm. or whatever. You can use, apply the same tools to remembering because so many people, they're so tuned in to negativity that they're not tuned in to the moments of positivity. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, this is, I, I do a passion journal every year. I have a theme every year. I think, what do I want to manifest this mm-hmm. year? Um, uh, so this this is the cover. Um, so it's just, it's it's been playful. You talked yeah. about drawing outside of the lines. You are mm-hmm. not allowed any lines in your passion journal. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, uh, Oh, you know, like someone, someone said, oh, you're so like, what's your name, Lisa Cooper? You're so funny. <laughs> so, um, for whatever reason, oh, I think, no, she said, I find people who can cope with life really inspiring. I like being around them. Yeah. And I like I love that quote because, mm. you yeah, know, I like to cope with being a single mother, you know, having all sorts of dramas. Um, and I remind myself people like people who can get on with it and cope. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the passion journal, what you do in your passion journal is you just record stuff that you like. You can see here, there's just like little quotes, yeah, nice. um, little sayings, anything that just captures your attention. Be like a magpie. Yeah. <laughs> um, Collecting you know, just, things. Yeah, just collect he- heaps of stuff. Yeah. It's not that you have to necessarily act on it, but where it comes to your career, where it's really cool in your career, you can start to... Um, Oh, I'll find another one down here. Okay, so this is 2015, and it's called The Passionate Pen. So, you know, as you said, I'm a best-selling author on Amazon. Well, that was started here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's 2010? <laughs> uh, 2000, no, last year. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 2015, so wow. Really quickly. Wow. Wow. Um, and I put in here, we are here to minister to people's hearts. That love was it. my theme. And you can see I just painted it. Yep, I love Nothing, it. You no know, uh, award-winning about that. It's yeah. just... <laughs> <laughs> it's creative. Yeah, and it's not straight, and it's not perfect. Yeah. And, and so when you're trying to manifest your ideal career, it might be that a client collects logos of companies they would, would love to work for, yeah. or maybe they want their own business and they think, oh, how's my logo going to look? And they mm-hmm. pick logos they like. Um, they might pick colors they like. They might pick what they want to people to say about them. Mm-hmm. They might collect feedback that people have said, gee, this, no, you're so amazing. You make an amazing holistic coach. You yeah. know, and you think, oh, you put that do they think so? Oh, <laughs> I'll write it down. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because awesome. Often people can see your potential uh, in you more than you can yourself. Yeah. So. This is where it goes in your yeah, uh, manifestation that. passion journal. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Do you find people can, just in terms of career, do you find that, you know, I guess not everyone's looking to up and leave their, their career or to leave their job or whatever it is. Do you find 
you can reinvent yourself or reinvent your passion or your work within your current job? Like, do you see women yeah. doing that? Yeah. Yeah, all, all the time. In fact, when I was in that job with that bully, bully boy, um, I realised I didn't want to be um, working in with people like that and I didn't want to be just doing recruiting, which was mm -hmm. half the time kind of trying to convince people to take jobs that weren't really perfect because you got paid a commission. Yeah. And I wanted to be a career coach. Mm -hmm. So instead of leaving my company, I started to schmooze... <laughs> Yeah. You know, chat with people in the team and yeah. the other team and hang with them and convince them of how perfect I would be. <laughs> but, you know, um, yeah, you just start to think, well, what's missing? What don't mm. you like? And you can, the Harvard Business School calls this uh, job sculpting, which is you take your linear job description that doesn't fit you anymore mm -hmm. and you think, but what I want to chunk out, yeah. what don't you like? And what would you want to um, put into it? And then you just start to, um, because you're focused, yeah. it's amazing what happens when yeah. you're focused. And it's totally not like agree. it just sits dormant in your passion journal because now you're really getting excited or, you know. Sometimes it's just because you're so annoyed or you're so sick of what's happening. It's not always that you're excited. Sometimes it's just out of sheer desperation. Um, yeah. Whatever the motivation is, it's your call for change. So, yeah, I love that. I love how you said in the beginning too, like it can be, it's not always a feeling of love and warmth that can drive your passion. It can be anger for, for changes. Yeah. And I love that. I've never really kind of thought about it in that way before, but that's, that's yeah, so true. Yeah, and there's a lot of angry people in the world. So, mm. you know, hey, let's everyone harness your anger and yeah. make positive change, not, yeah. not bang on and, and be yeah. evil, but, but, but do something. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I love that. I love that. All right, so collecting signs and evidence and quotes and, and things that people say and, and putting it all into the passion journal, collecting images that, you know, that people love and, yeah. and that that's something that they want to manifest yeah. into their life, putting that all into the journal. Okay, yeah. so what is the fourth key step in finding your passion and purpose? And you can see how all the steps are kind of intertwined because yeah. every way you're kind of circling around them because the other thing that's really important to put in your passion journal um, and it leads into the steps is so you talked earlier about how people don't believe it's for them or self-doubt or whatever mm -hmm. so people say I'm too old to change you know I hear yeah. that from people in their 20s yeah. so, um, <laughs> so or I'm 50 you know it's over for me someone said god I, I had my best selling book when I was 50 I'm 50 this year and I think it's fabulous being 50 but a lot of people say oh god weren't you depressed so um, yeah, I think it's really important to collect examples of people living or, or mm. past who are actually, people say, oh, you can't make a living from your passion. I'm oh, good grief. Look around you. Yeah. Look how many, many people. Yeah. Richard Benson's made a damn good living off his passion yeah. and his passion is having fun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He says, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. And yeah. I adopted that as my mantra. And he was, didn't have a lot of money. People make up excuses, mm. I've got no yeah. money, I've got to pay my mortgage. Well, we all, we all have. I, I wasn't, um, you know, I had a mortgage when I left my job to start my business. And um, you just you make it happen. Um, yeah. Do your due diligence. But um, collect examples of maybe if you're a single mum and um, you could look for, think of a single mum who's just like you and she's doing it. Yeah. So either ring her up and ask her how she did it or, or study her up. Um, yeah, I can definitely say that when I've ever made changes in my life, I've definitely looked to the people who are doing what I want to be doing. Yeah. And I kind of put the blinkers on everything else that's, you know, people are saying that that's not going to work, whatever. Any kind of negativity, I just choose, it's not, I just really choose not to look there and just focus on yeah. where I'm going. And yeah. that becomes in your consciousness, that becomes in your awareness. It's all totally doable then, you know, it kind of expands yeah. your horizons. Whereas if. Yeah. Yeah, if you're not, then it kind of it looks too hard. It's a really um, important thing that you said too, because you you can't you can't allow doubt. Yeah. You're not uh, doubt it will unravel you because yeah. doubt, doubt is your traitor. It will yeah. you know it's your rational mind. It's okay to be risk to be risk adverse. You know, as a, yeah. as a single mum, uh, you know, I left stuff. I'm not I'm not naive. I didn't just leap off like a lemming off the cliff and hope that maybe I might grow a parachute. Yeah. I think it's good to use your fear constructively, but you don't want to be around people who are saying, Oh, why don't you do oh, well, don't you know it's a bad economy or yeah, um, yeah. gosh, so and so failed, oh she lost her house, oh. 
you've got to really um, really up the ante intensify the positivity otherwise you you'll just yeah um, I think yeah, definitely. And I think pick your audience who you tell it to, right? So I found along the way over the years telling, you know, people about different things that I'm doing and them being quite negative because that's their mindset. They believe that, oh, why, how yeah. could that even take yeah. off, do you know? It's their fear talking. Yeah, and so then I get caught up in their story, do you know, and I just found you really have to pick your audience and if you're not sure, then keep it to yourself <laughs> for a little while yeah. until you're – Till you're yeah. more confident in it, until it kind of really becomes more of your being, then yeah. you can spread it to the world. So you, you know, you, you're further along, and you're, yeah. you know, like you say, your confidence. We've made some strides, and, yeah. and there are a lot of people. They they look to their family for support or affirmation, and sadly, um, Michelangelo. You know, he, he knew this. He got um, caned by his dad for wanting to be a sculptor. It was such a shamely profession for, wow. for a boy to pursue. So, you know, many, many people, you, and it's not necessarily you're going to be some great, but you might. Yeah. But just be aware that uh, don't, don't, don't be hard on your family if they're not supportive mm. or your best friends because they, they have their own uh, karmic life story, whatever, yeah. baggage. Um, you are not them. You, yeah. You yeah, I love that. That's a good point. Don't be hard on them. <laughs> and it's really good to remember, you know, it's a fantastic world now because you can find some of my best supporters in terms of helping me with my publishing uh, goals have been people I've never met on um, Facebook gets a bad rap sometimes, but I love being part of a community of like-minded mm. people and I'm part of groups where negativity is bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how it yeah. should be. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you can get support anywhere nowadays. It's like a fantastic yeah. time to pursue your passion. Yeah, agreed. I feel like there is more opportunities to to live your passion, to make money from your passion. Um, yeah. It just feels like it's – there's, you know, with online businesses and technology and so forth, it kind of feels like the, the playing field is really level now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the startup costs, the entry costs, mm. you know, all the barriers, like um, you don't have to have um, bricks and mortar, you don't have yeah. to have overheads, you can shape shift all the time, you can, yeah. when I was younger, I, I was called sort of fickle for having many, many interests, you know, you're supposed to do one thing, now people, everyone's a comedian, everyone's doing lots of different things yeah. for continuity of income. Yeah. Um, especially self-employed people. So, but it's all undertwined. Like a friend of mine, she's an Australian, Carla Coulson. She's a photographer, amazing photographer, and you know she does photography mentoring. She does travel workshops. She does branding uh, photography. She she's um, produced books and things. It's all tied by her passion for beauty mm. and connection and photography. Um, and so, yeah, like you said, what were the barriers? The fourth step is just, who was it? Michael Jordan, the basketballer, once said, um, you don't have to let obstacles stop you. You just maybe don't run into them. Yeah. If, unless you can power through them. But you can go around them or under them and just mm. um, use curiosity and, uh, and be ask open, generative questions. How can I find more money to do this? Or yeah. how can I start a company with zero or startup company? Yeah. Or how can I learn to be more confident? And listen yeah. and watch what sort of comes into your orbit. Um, because yeah, there will them. always be obstacles. There's obstacles even if you hate your job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's always going to be obstacles. And I love how you said, like, ask the question. Like, don't, you know, don't try and answer it straight away. Like, wait for the answer to come. But you need to ask yeah. the question first. Like, how can I start a business with zero funds? Awesome yeah. question because that's a lot of people. Yeah, and I did it and I help people do it all the time. And yeah. as you said, it's a perfect time. Um, and those open generative questions coming back to where, where is the power in our lives? The power is in our intuitive um, higher consciousness yeah. and our heart wisdom um, and tapping into that power, getting off all this negative um, media, horrible yeah. piping, away from negative mm. people, get connecting with nature and... Um, meditating and all those things are really, really mm -hmm. important tools that many, like Adriana Huffington, who wrote yeah. that wonderful book, Thrive, yeah. 
um, you know, suddenly it's become kind of legitimate or normal to to be a meditating businesswoman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because there's lots of um, different people doing business in different ways, like having more flex time in their business. I certainly know yeah. with um, with my coach at the moment, she really encourages to have flex time, have like have time off every month, you know, she talks about having yeah. a week off every month and a month off every year, do you know, because yeah. that flex time allows for creativity. Yeah, that's allows right. Allows for, yeah. for problem solving and, and, and building. A lot of people, you see, that's where they've got to, with these barriers, they've got to look at, well, who's putting the barrier up? Who's got the assumption that you have to eat your, your lunch over your desk or you'll be fine? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of fear, but if you, knowledge is power. So, like, when yeah. I was bullied in the workplace, I powered up that boss who threatened to smack my head in. He also said I had to resign from the company in order to try and get a role in the other part of the company. Wow. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> resign and then you're out. Yeah, yeah. like resign and come back in. I thought, yeah. no, that doesn't sound right to me. Mm. So, I, I powered up. I, yeah. I learned a lot about... Um, what I needed to learn. So, if time, finding time for yourself, if guilt or whatever it is that stops particularly women from thinking. Like one lady said, "I have it's the burnt toast syndrome. Everyone gets everything first, and I get the scraps." Well, oh, yeah. hello, who's who's um, creating that? Yeah. And yeah, maybe the kids won't like it at first because mummy's taking time out, but they sure love that person that's coming back refreshed. And yeah, your absolutely. Too, your cat, your dog, your gnome. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you can speak from experience because you are a single mum, yeah? <laughs> Well, I was, yeah, I was a single mum now, you know, now, I'm, uh, and we were talking earlier, yeah. the mutual passion journal, you know, I, I manifested my, my partner in 2008, and so we're still together, um, I wrote a letter in my passion journal, um, to, which was about my um, dear soulmate, my heart feels sad because I feel you are near, I started, oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't even know who he was. I love that, um, I'm totally going to do that. <laughs> No, it's just putting it in there. Um, yeah, you've got to really be clear about, it's like buying a house, you know, mm. if you're kind of not clear about what your non-negotiable needs are, yeah. um, you'll get distracted with something shiny and it's, whether it's a job, a person, mm. um, a house, you, you just have to have real clarity about what your non-negotiable criteria yeah. is and yeah. believe it can be yours. Yes, that's a big one, belief. Yeah, and just don't settle, but don't expect it all in, you know, it can come in different shapes. It's yeah. not about, I didn't manifest, you have to be six foot four, no shorter than six, you know, it's yeah. about criteria. It's yeah, not yeah, about yeah, yeah, we get lost in all of that. Yeah. Um, fantastic. All right, so if people want to find out more about your work um, and more about your books, because you've also got the Midlife Career Rescue as well, those series of books. Yeah, I've got the trilogy. The um, so you can find even if you just Google uh, midlife career rescue on, or you go straight to Amazon, you'll find mm -hmm. them. They've got the lovely hummingbird in the cage, yeah. which was um, inspired at the time because I worked with a career coach who she got me to draw a picture, and I was the person in the cage with the door open. I didn't know how to fly anymore. So yeah, wow, I love that. I, she cried. Um, so I love that cover and it speaks to a lot of people yeah. just feeling trapped. Um, but yes, you can fly out of that cage. So Midlife Career Rescue, you'll see the hummingbird because the hummingbird is capable of amazing feats. Yes. Um, and also my website, worklifesolutions.co.nz or Cassandra Gaysford. Um, you will find me if you're meant to find these books. I will include your link <laughs> under this video for sure. And you have a passion book gift for people that um, click on the link and go to your website. They can download. Yeah, it's free. It's on the home page. It's downloadable. Um, and, yeah, it just should, tells you the tips that I've talked about, how to create a passion, passion journal, whether it's for business or, or um, health goals or career goals. So, yeah, go to the home page and you'll click it there. Awesome. Thank I you, you so it. much. I've really enjoyed talking to you today. I know everyone's going to love your passion steps. And your wisdom on living with more purpose, passion, whether it be in your job, in your life, in relationships, I'm definitely going to use that passion journal to manifest. 
yeah, the relationship. Yeah. Mm. And all your people that follow you, um, just share it. Share what's happening. Share, yeah. share how magical this thing is. Because yeah. um, it is. It's law of attraction stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you let me know this now what you're manifesting in your passion journal. And I will. Uh, I will do that for sure. And I'll like it. A, yeah. Well, well, I'm gonna do it. That's that's my intention. So, I'll put a link under this video so everyone can get, download your free passion book. I'll also put a link to your midlife career rescue books on right. Amazon. Um, and so if they want to come and work with you, find out more, all of the details will be there. But thank you so much for your time today. It's been such a pleasure. I've really wow. enjoyed this conversation. Great. Me too, Vesna. I think it's a really amazing thing that you're, that you're doing here and I look forward to the other people that are journeying with you. Awesome.